right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Uh, we are a webinar, uh, a webcast, an online show. Um, as, as you regulars know, we're the, the terminology is up for debate, what you want to call these things, but whatever um, we are, a webinar seems to be the word of choice. Um, we are here live every um, Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, but if you are unable to join us on, ten, on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do record the show every week, and it is posted up to the website afterwards. And I'll show you where to find that um, after at the end of today's show. So you can always come and um, watch the show um, when it's convenient for you. Uh, the show is free and open to anyone to watch. So if you have any colleagues, friends, family members, anybody you know who might be interested in any of the topics we've had on the show, um, please do send them to our website. They can sign up for our live sessions and they can watch any of the recordings that are on our website. Um, we do a mixture of things here on M Compass Live, uh, book reviews, uh, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of, of services and products. Basically, our only criteria is that it's something library related, uh, something that libraries are actually doing, some resource or service that libraries could use, um, something being done um, on behalf of libraries. Uh, but we're pretty broad with that, so you may sometimes see some topics that seem a little out of the box, not 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 you would think of for libraries. But you know, hold on, watch with us, and you might learn something that we're, that could be done in a library. Um, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do sessions sometimes. We also bring in guest speakers, and that's what we have this morning. Um, with us to my left is um, Aaron Willis, who is at um, just from. The Bennett Martin Public Library, right? Um, which is part of Lincoln City Libraries, mm -hmm. um, just up the street from us. I'm not, is that are you based at a? Yeah, you're based right up uh, the one right up a few blocks. Right, from us. yes, yeah. two blocks away. <laughs> um, and she's a curator at the Heritage Room of Nebraska Authors there, and um, they have been working on. And I'm going to let you explain more of it. Um, a something coming up officially next year, but. A lot of the stuff related to it is starting already this year. Um, in Nebraska's uh, 150th uh, birthday, that's right. Whatever, the I hope I get the sesquicentennial. That's sesquicentennial. Yeah, always that's gotta correct. slow down and say. That. <laughs> um, and that's actually in 2017 officially for Nebraska. Um, but there's lots of programs and things going on related to that. And of course, libraries we are involved as well. And Erin's going to tell us what she's got put together related to the um, celebrations. So um, I'll stop talking and let you take over and right. tell us all about what you guys are doing. Thank you all. I'm really happy to be here and really excited to talk about this project. I think this is uh, one of the um, one of the best ways that we can celebrate the sesquicentennial of Nebraska. Um, I'll first share the, well, first I'll introduce myself a little um, a little bit more. I'm going to, how do I click through this? I'll just click, click onto there, yeah. Okay. There you go. Yep. Uh, so my name is Erin Willis, and I am the curator of the uh, Jane Pope Geske Heritage Room of Nebraska Authors, um, and that's a special collection in Lincoln City Libraries. It is their archival collection, and we collect books by Nebraska authors, and we've been collecting books by Nebraska authors since 1940. Uh, when a librarian there, Ethel Jane Maher, started collecting books that uh, she realized were valuable to the collection, um, either because they were first editions or maybe they had an inscription by the author, mm -hmm. um, or they um, they might have been a friend. The authors at that time in 1949, many of the authors that we recognize as being Nebraska authors, Mari Sandoz, Beth Streeter Aldrich, John Nyhart, um, all of these people were still writing. Mm -hmm. um, Willa Cather had died the year before, but uh, a number of these authors were friends um, of Lincoln City Libraries, and so um, this librarian started collecting books. And this collection was part of Lincoln City Libraries, uh, and Lincoln Library supported it until uh, the 70s. And at that point, um, Jane Pope Geske, who you all probably recognize as being a past director of the Nebraska mm -hmm. Library Commission, was one of the we early, <laughs> right? <laughs> so for any of you who didn't know, she was a, uh, a champion of Nebraska authors and literature and books in general. And um, she really supported this collection. And she, with um, another, a number of the other supporters, created um, an endowment uh, through the Nebraska um, 
Nebraska, or I'm sorry, the National Endowment for the Humanities, and they um, there's a now uh, an endowment created with that and with the uh, support of volunteers and donors um, to create the matching funds for this endowment, which is what now supports the Heritage Room, and um, the the committee that supports the Heritage Room is called the Nebraska Literary Heritage Association, and so that is the that is the board of directors for the Heritage Room um, of Nebraska Authors, and so that's uh, that's an, a long introduction for uh, where I'm from and um, and. Uh, why I am the person who's going to be talking about Nebraska books. Judy Keedle, who you'll see on the slide, is an educator with the Nebraska State Historical Society, mm -hmm. and she is the chairperson or the um, the um, committee chair for the special this special and this is a um, subcommittee of the Nebraska Literary Heritage Association, and it's the Nebraska 150 Book Selection Committee. Judy unfortunately wasn't able to make it today, so mm -hmm. I'm going to do my best to um, talk about the books. Um, with her authority, so <laughs> so I'm sure we'll, be fine. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to move on to the next slide and talk a little bit about the uh, Nebraska books and the committee who chose the books. Uh, first, I'll just um, give you the mission statement of the Nebraska State. Um, it's called the 150 Celebration, and it's the Nebraska 150 Commission who developed uh, the mission statement. And I'll read that here, and we'll, then we'll talk about how we're aligned with this mission. The mission of the Nebraska 150 Commission is to come together with Nebraskans across the state to celebrate and commemorate history and build a platform for appreciating our diverse backgrounds for generations to come. The sesquicentennial will provide opportunities for native and non-native Nebraskans to recognize our shared heritage and reflect on our past while building for our future. So when the Nebraska 150 Commission, which has been around uh, now for about two years, planning mm -hmm. for the uh, sesquicentennial celebration, which is March 1st, 2017, and um, so they've been preparing for this and trying to find ways to call attention to our shared history. And um, I need to give a shout out to our to Gloria Strope, who was our past board NLHA president, and her husband John Strope, who um, conceived of the idea of coming up with a a, a list of notable books that represent Nebraska's history. And so building on this idea, we um, we gave the idea to the Nebraska Literary Heritage Association, who agreed that this was a good idea, and then we came up with this committee that you see here. So Judy Keedle uh, from the Nebraska State Historical Society is the committee chair. Um, Sharon Bishop is a retired English teacher from Henderson. She also works with the um, Robert Brooks um, Writing Project at the mm -hmm. university. So she does, she writes about place conscious um, literature. Deborah Dragos is here um, at the Nebraska Library Commission, and she's also a new board member on the Nebraska Literary Heritage Association. Kathy Johnson is a librarian at the um, university in at UNL. Um, Dr. Michael Page is a UNL English professor. Lorraine Riedizel is the library director at Beatrice Public Library. Uh, Gloria Strope, who I mentioned, is the NLHA board president, or she was past president last year. Autumn Sweely is also an NLHA member. Um, she is she's from Omaha and uh, she's a librarian and also a parent, a mother of five. So she helped us with the children's book list and um, and also she's a, a, a reader. So she um, she's read most of the Nebraska literature. So uh, and then myself as the ex officio uh, curator of the collection. So I um, contributed. Um, a little bit to, to what this group had to offer. So these are the people who selected the books for the book uh, for the book list. So our own mission uh, for Nebraska Nebraska 150 books is what um, what this reading initiative is called. And the mission of our group was to choose 150 books uh, from Nebraska to read in conjunction with the state sesquicentennial. Um, now, part of uh, sub point one here was that we had to be fully aligned with the mission of the Nebraska 150 Commission. Mm -hmm. And so this involved, um, involved a petition or a, we had to make our case to the Nebraska 150 Commission and they have an endorsement process. And mm -hmm. so we were, as of January, the endorsed book list for the sesquicentennial. Um, and so that means we are the authoritative list. And this was based on our committee and then we also had to give them a, a 
our initial list, things, that, some ideas that we'd come up with, and they endorsed us as the right people to create this list. And then um, when the well, that's good to know that not just any any old person can go off and right. do something related <laughs> to the celebration. That anybody who's any any event that's being done or project has got to be um, officially. Exactly. Authorized. If yeah. you look at the, the Nebraska, uh, the 150 Commission website is any150.org, and you can see all of the endorsed programs at that website. And they do, um, they have a pretty solid vetting process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they have a, um, a committee that meets regularly and they evaluate the process. So we had to go, we've gone through two steps to be, um, to be we were first endorsed um, in January and then after the book list came out and um, things, the book list actually came out in April so that we could have a year-long reading initiative mm -hmm. and so when the book list came out in April it was reevaluated by the Commission and at that point um, we were given signature status so mm -hmm. um, we're one of the signature one of I think at this point I think there are four signature programs with the sesquicentennial so um, so we're <coughs> we have a little bit uh, more weight and more stake in the sesquicentennial mm -hmm. um, as an endorsed uh, signature program. Mm -hmm. And so you can see that on the sesquicentennial website. So um, so we are fully aligned with the mission of the Nebraska 150 celebration. And so our next step um, was to consider the genres, uh, things that would be appealing to diverse groups of readers. And so we, just generally speaking, we have fiction, nonfiction, uh, young adult, children's, and poetry, um, and that and those are you know those are separated out uh, by subject or by subject categories, but also just the broader genres, uh, so readers can choose what they would like to read. And then uh, number three is to highlight the top twelve recommended books in fiction, nonfiction, poetry, young adult, children's um, genres, so that Nebraska's Nebraskans can read one each month. Um, the idea was, and we'll see this in a later slide that um, in order to prepare for the sesquicentennial, we wanted to have an achievable goal for Nebraskans. Mm -hmm. And so um, this is part of our reading challenge that I'll also talk about. But every month we feature one book from each of these categories. And um, we give extra information on the books and um, just highlight their significance in, uh, in their place in Nebraska's history. And so um, you can look at our website, which is nebraska150books.org, to see those books um, categorized every month. And, um, and then you can, this is just a way for, um, for readers to have an idea of what we're reading and what they could be reading every month. So and it's nice to have something like that that's like not so, um, Overwhelming as here's the 150. Exactly. That you need to yes. Know about. Here's just <laughs> exactly. a few to start with. <laughs> uh, and I think um, that was the idea too. Is there is such a huge body of literature from Nebraska um, in in the Heritage Room alone. We collect. We have more than 14,000 books by more than 4,000 Nebraska authors. So really. Um, there's a huge scope to Nebraska literature, and we just had to break it down and break it down mm -hmm. until we could um, have an achievable amount of books for um, to highlight for the for this um, for this reading project. So let's uh, move on here to the next slide, which is what is the Nebraska author criteria? And this is a criteria that we borrowed from the um, from the Nebraska from the Heritage Room and the Nebraska Literary Heritage Association. This is what we use to decide what can be included in the collection. Uh, the first criteria is that the author was born or grew up in Nebraska. And so anyone who started out here, uh, whether or not they moved away when they were 10, or, you know, mm -hmm. if they were born here or they grew up here, they're considered a Nebraska author. Uh, second criteria is that the author was educated in Nebraska. A lot of times, professor or people come to school here and um, spend a, a large part of their education and their formative writing years in in Nebraska, and they would be considered a Nebraska author. Um, and number three, that the author spent most of their productive writing years in Nebraska. And as a general mm -hmm. measure, we use ten years. You know, about ten years is uh, mm -hmm. it's hard to. Hard to say um, exactly what what is. I mean, there's a little bit. <laughs> this is kind of a you case by case situation. Little, yeah. But you have we to like evaluate to evaluate each one on their own. But yeah. Right. So we like to say if they they spent productive writing time here in Nebraska, um, then we consider them a Nebraska author. So that's what we use for the um, author criteria. Now the Nebraska book criteria, we gave priority to books about Nebraska. So if Nebraska authors were writing about Nebraska or if the books had a Nebraska setting, those books um, we consider authentically Nebraskan. 
Um, we also had to consider availability. If we are asking patrons and um, readers to read books um, by Nebraska authors, the books need to be available for them. So, mm -hmm. for example, um, we might have chosen more Hartley Burr Alexander books. Um, Hartley Burr Alexander was the gentleman responsible for the narratives in the state capitol, mm -hmm. um, and he wrote, he, he contributed significantly to the uh, Nebraska story, and he's somebody who we might um, have put put some of his books on the list, um, and I, we do have one of his books, but unfortunately they're not in print anymore. We have archived yeah. copies um, and limited editions in the Heritage Room, and they're in various libraries throughout the state, but there aren't enough that we could legitimately keep something like this on the list. So that everybody who might be interested to be able to get a hold of it. Right, oh, exactly. And yeah. so this is, I mean, we get a lot of questions about why certain books aren't on the list when they, um, you know, when they were such a big influence in Nebraska. And we, um, this is one of the things we just have to say, they're, they're not available, unfortunately, even if they are um, significant to Nebraska. Some things just couldn't be on the list for this reason. And Third is that the titles will reflect a variety of works that have appealed to Nebraskans over time. Um, so this is <laughs> uh, this was probably the hardest thing to um, to make sure that we had a variety. I think it would have been um, easy to say all of you know Willa Cather's books should be on the list, mm -hmm. um, but we we have to we wanted to make sure that we our book list was representative of um, Nebraska geographically. Um, we were thinking with respect to time and history. That, I mean, we're covering mm -hmm. 150 years here, so yeah. you know there was a lot of good literature produced in the um, 1930s and in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. But we we really had to um, keep a um, keep time and history um, in mind when we were thinking about it. We also had to consider diversity and um, diversity in authors and diversity in subject matter. And so those were all considerations in, um, in deciding on the final titles. So we have two different lists, which uh, we'll show you next. Um, but we, the short list of books, um, which is 12 books from each category, fiction, nonfiction, young adult, children, and poetry, um, we decided that the books on that short list should be by a Nebraska, they need to meet the criteria for a Nebraska author and a Nebraska book. And the books on the long list, which is 150 books, <laughs> there are 150 books on that list, and those um, could be a Nebraska author or they could be a Nebraska book. So if, as long as they meet one of the criteria, it might be that the author is from a different state but writes um, writes about Nebraska, and um, that is that's acceptable on the long list. So uh, let's move on here. I think I lost my. There it is. Okay. Uh, oh, I covered most of this already. Historical relevance, attention to diversity, time and history, geography, and that the books have to be available. Uh, so with this in mind, we um, we developed the book list, and this took months. We started meeting in September and met um, met about six times between September and December to really uh, pin down. Well, first we exhaustively considered which books should be on the list, and it's funny. We all thought, how will we come up with 150 books, and then the the book list was hundreds of books long, and so at that yeah. point it was winnowing the list down and trying to decide um, which of these excellent, ex and they, we have some incredible books by Nebraska authors, we really had to uh, decide which of those, um, which of the books best represented um, all of the, <clears throat> all of these things we wanted to consider. Um, and so from about, from late October through December, it was just um, getting that list down to the, really the most significant books um, from Nebraska authors. And so at, uh, as of, let's see, late January, we had uh, a book list that we thought was very good according to the standards of our group and um, was agreed upon by the members of the selection committee. And at that point, um, we decided it was time to get the list out there, kind of do a beta test, uh, test reaction, see mm -hmm. what people thought of the list. And uh, I, I, I should say it's good for something like this, for a community reading initiative, um, and especially something with the scope of an entire state, for a, for a reading initiative that's going to um, have readers all over the state looking at these books. You really want to have as many eyes on the list as you can. I mean, you really want to make sure, sure that you have the best possible uh, books on the list. And so we, after our book com committee agreed on the list, um, we sent it out to educators throughout the state, um, teachers, 
uh, grade school teachers, middle school teachers, high school teachers, professors, librarians. We had we sent it to bookstore all the bookstore owners across <laughs> the state. Uh, they have a very good idea of what um, what kind of books are sold and what people you know what's appealing mm -hmm. to readers. So we sent um, and then humanities professionals. So we had um, we had different people in um, in different you know the. Center for Great Plains Studies, for example, or you know anything, um, any c group that um, historical societies, things like that. We sent the list out to them too to have a contextual input for the list, and so, and then community um, community members. So we also sent it out to people who just read, who we know to be good pa patrons, and who read a, a broad um, array of literature. We sent the list to them too. So we. <laughs> Sent out all these letters, and then when the the comments came back, we we reevaluated them and incorporated um, a number of changes actually into our list, and that's how we came up with the final list of books. And so this is going to be hard to see, uh, which is why I put download the printable book list at um, there's the website right there. It might be easier to just go to Nebraska150books.org. Yes, and then, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so and this is the yeah, you can type that all in. Yeah. Um, as, as some of you have been in, who've seen the show before, I'm gathering up all the different URLs for this and the websites mm -hmm. and everything, the, um, the 150 Celebration, the 150 Books site, um, the Heritage Room, everything, um, into our delicious account um, for the Library Commission. So you have a collection of all those links available to you afterwards, too, so you can Perfect. get to them yes. when I send you out the info about the recording when it's available. <laughs> So this is uh, so this is a book that's easily downloadable and it's a uh, one page. You can print it front and back, and uh, we also have these available to order. Our program is sponsored by a grant from the um, Humanities Nebraska, and Humanities Nebraska pays for the materials, and so we c and they pay for the postage as well. So we, if you want these book lists to pass out to your patrons, we can send you a stack of uh, book lists, and those are just easy to grab and look at. Mm -hmm. And these are just titles, uh, titles and authors. And um, if you want more information about the books, uh, when we have time at the end of the show, we can look through uh, the individual book pages, which will talk about their publishing, um, statistics, you know, a little bit about the books, where they're published, the author websites, their um, dates they were published, things like that. But uh, this is what you're looking for on the website. And so you can download those and print them and see all the books that are on. Uh, those are the 150 books. Full list. Yeah. Full list, yes. So now what we're going to look at is the short list, the manageable <laughs> short list of books. And um, this is the fiction list. And I'll just quickly, um, there are 42 of these by the time you do the fiction, nonfiction, um, all the categories. So I'm just going to briefly go over a couple of these um, and talk about them just so you get a good idea of why some of these were in their or were included on the list. Um, the Swan Gondola by Timothy Shaffert. Uh, Timothy Shaffert is a, a professor at UNL and um, has written several books. The Swan Gondola is a book about the Omaha uh, Fair in the late um, 1800s, and the the book is kind of magical. It's it's a fiction story, but it's also um, it has that element of historical uh, historical fact. And so, um, so that's a if you've read maybe the um, the Devil in the White City, it's oh, compared yeah. to that book quite a bit. Um, so, except for this has fictional characters, but um, I like Devil in the White City. Yeah, yeah that was a that. <laughs> that's an excellent book. So this is um, has the same kind of tenor. Um, Patient in Room 18 is by an author that people don't uh, really recognize either as being a Nebraskan or being as significant as she was. Um, Mignon Eberhardt wrote uh, prolifically mystery books. She was considered America's, um, oh, no, I can't think of her name, Agatha Christie. <laughs> she was um, the, at the Agatha Christie of America. Mm -hmm. um, and she was a hugely popular um, bestseller in the fiction or in the uh, mystery category. So this is one of... Uh, Patient in Room 18 takes place at Bryan Hospital here in Lincoln, and um, it's just it's one of her one of the books that has been reprinted. Three of her books are um, in reprint right now through the University of Nebraska Press, and this is one of them. Uh, My Antonia was an easy <laughs> easy pick, very reflective of Nebraska, and um, probably our most famous work to come out from a Nebraska author. The Meaning of Names by Karen Shoemaker is the Nebraska one book, one right, Nebraska this year, pick yep. this year. And we that just is, had Karen on the show a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, actually. there you go. <laughs> so you might already be familiar with this book. And this is a World War One story. 
Tilly Olson was a very famous short story writer. Uh, Tell Me a Riddle was uh, o. Henry Prize winner. It was, um, it's been anthologized uh, over and over and over. And so this is just exemplary of this short, uh, short story category. Um, a Lantern in Her Hand, Best Reader Aldrich, was also a one book, one Nebraska yeah. pick at one time. And this is a homestead, uh, homesteading um, story. And then Hector's Bliss is also a homesteading story. This is about uh, black settlers who, or black homesteaders who settled at Goose Lake, Nebraska. And it is fascinating. It's um, mm -hmm. a story that not many people know, actually. Um, so that's a good one to look at. A Different Plane uh, was edited by Ledette Randolph. And it is a uh, contemporary Nebraska fiction writer. So a lot of names that you would recognize as being very famous. Ron Hansen, Tom McNeil, um, these... Uh, Those would be a collection of short, shorter stories collect, than... Yes, oh, nice. short story okay. essay uh, book by all different authors from Nebraska. So that's an excellent one just to get a, a general idea of Nebraska mm -hmm. literature. Good Night Nebraska is uh, is a, a fictional book about a small town, Nebraska. Um, and it's a... This is kind of our our big big name book. This was a bestseller, and it has a <clears throat> a solid number. I mean, if you want to know more about Nebraska, you know, it, it gives a good idea of the Nebraska small town atmosphere, kind of you know Friday Night Lights ish, except for with really <laughs> really interesting characters. Yeah. The Nebraska Nebraska football atmosphere, small town atmosphere, and then just some really interesting personalities. A Perfect Evil was, um, well, Alex Kava, we all know, to be an excellent and prolific mm -hmm. Nebraska author as well. And A Perfect Evil is her story that centers on the, the bank robberies, the very famous bank robberies in Nebraska. Uh, the Home Place by Wright Morris is um, was a, a, the first book of its kind, actually. It's full page, uh, margin to margin pictures. And the story is about uh, one a man one day visit, you know, comes home to visit the home place. And so that's a, um, that's a really interesting representative book of um, kind of mid-century Nebraska writing. And then Haven's Wake by Ledette Randolph is a summer story, a summer family story, just your, your all around good character driven fiction. So those are, um, that's our representative list of uh, Nebraska fiction. So nonfiction, um, and these, I might have to go a little faster through these, but mm -hmm. History of Nebraska is, uh, has been edited every 10 years about because we keep, because mm -hmm. Nebraska is changing and evolving all the time. And so um, that is a really good one to just have a, a general grasp of Nebraska history. I Am a Man is by Joe Starita, and it's Chief Standing Bear's Journey for Justice uh, was really compelling and moving um, in its, when it was published in 2012, I think. Mm -hmm. It was instantly uh, picked for Nebraska's uh, One Book, One, one Nebraska, book, yeah. and mm -hmm. then we also, uh, Nebraska, or Lincoln Libraries chose it for the One Book, One Lincoln, um, and it was really a compelling story that not, ma not many people knew about at, the, at that time, um, and so I, this is really called attention to the Native American uh, plight, and um, especially in Nebraska. Local Wonders was the runaway favorite by our selection <laughs> committee and also the people that we uh, that we submitted the list to. Ted Coosier, oh, yeah, as you Ted know, Coosier, was yeah. the National Poet Laureate uh, for four years, and Local Wonders is his story about um, living in rural Nebraska, and it really um, considers the land and the atmosphere. Uh, Solomon Butcher, Photographing the American Dream, was written by John Carter. John Carter just died a couple years ago, but he um, really called attention to these uh, photographs of Nebraska homesteaders. And these photographs are world famous. Um, Solomon Butcher uh, has become, he's coming back into vogue um, <laughs> recently and partly um, in, a, in, a, in a big way nationally and a, uh, has a lot to do with this book. Um, Paul Johnsgaard uh, has written, oh gosh, more than 80 books, I think. He's um, in his 80s and uh, he's still can, going strong. Still going strong. <laughs> he still publishes one or two books a year. Wow. And The Seasons of the Tall Grass Prairie is, uh, talks about Nebraska um, throughout the year and um, our, our ecology and, and the land. Old Jewels was uh, the Mari Sandoz pick. This was not, Mari Sandoz is one of, um, one of the authors that was most debated. She has so many excellent books, and mm -hmm. to really try and choose the best one was hard. I was thinking that'd be the hardest <laughs> one. The, one, the more prolific authors trying to pick, because, like you were saying earlier, 
you don't want to just have all the big names and all their big all of their uh -huh. titles. You want to let people learn about some of the people, the authors and writers they've never never heard of. Exactly, so exactly. How you, uh, yeah. So how right? How do you make that choice? And in this case, this is one of the situations when we had originally chosen Cheyenne Autumn by Mar Mari Sandoz, and uh, this is one of the cases when we really listened to the input from our. Um, the professionals who we sent the list to, they mm. everyone said you can't <laughs> you can't keep old jewels off the short list. So <laughs> we um, old jewels is on the list and really uh, I mean really it belongs there. It's um, a great story of Mari's dad Jules, and they're um, kind of the life of a rugged uh, pioneer man. So that's a great one. Keith County Journal is another uh, ecology kind of book, and um, this focuses on the land again. The Harmony, uh, Harmony of the Arts, Nebraska State Capitol um, is just what it sounds like. Uh, it's about the state capitol and um, beautiful pictures in this book. So that's a great one to look at. Um, All the Strange Hours, The Excavation of a Life. Lauren Isley is one of our, uh, he's called, you know, the modern Thoreau. He, li mm -hmm. he writes a lot about, uh, he, he was a nature lover, um, he writes poetry, and All the Strange Hours is the story of his life um, by him. So that's um, the autobiography. The Middle of Everywhere, The World's Refugees Come to Our Town by Mary Pfeiffer. Most of you will probably recognize Mary Pfeiffer for her, um, mm -hmm. her book, Reviving Ophelia, which was printed um, early, oh gosh, 2000 maybe, some late 1900s or, or you know, early the century. But that kind of launched Mary Pfeiffer um, into her writing career. And uh, she writes about, this is a book about refugees, but she really cares about people and um, this one talks about immigrants who live in, who settle in Lincoln and uh, why they come to Lincoln and so this is a, a great regional one and a good um, helps you understand immigration a little bit better as well. The Autobiography of Malcolm X. Uh, this book <laughs> doesn't talk about Nebraska so much. Uh, we had a hard time, I mean, for this one to meet the book criteria and, or I mean, the author criteria and the book criteria, we had to stretch it a little bit because it mm -hmm. doesn't really focus on Nebraska, although the opening line does talk about his home in, in Omaha. So mm -hmm. this is, um, so this one we made an exception for because it is such a significant important book. Character, important <laughs> yes. Um, person, yeah. In, uh, yes, exactly, an important story. So, um, and then the Fighting the Liberal, the autobiography of George Norris was our final pick. So we hope that that covers, you know, a nonfiction wise, a great um, helps you understand Nebraska a little bit better. The Young Adult in Picture Books, um, Night of the Twisters by Ivy Ruckman is a great book. It's a middle school read, and it talks about the night of the, oh, there were seven or eight tornadoes in Grand Island, Nebraska, and it mm -hmm. talks about the story of a little boy who endured those tornadoes. Bag in the Wind is a book of poetry and pictures by Ted Couser. It's a children's book and beautiful. It's about um, conservation and recycling. Um, so. That's a, a good one to read to a classroom. The C is for Cornhusker is a Nebraska state alphabet. This is these books are famous. <laughs> they were um, there's a book for every state. C is for Cornhusker is the Nebraska state book, and there's um, mm -hmm. there's something relevant uh, to Nebraska for each letter. So you can go letter by letter through that mm -hmm. book. Sister Sweet Ella is a book by Rosecrans Hoffman. Uh, Rosecrans Hoffman is famous for illustrating a number of books, but in this case she wrote and illustrated Sweet Sister Ella. So um, that's um, that's a good one by her. It's also a picture children's book. Billy and, and actually I have a question about that one. Uh -huh. um, someone had actually, obviously they, they put this question before you even got to the list. Um, they did in here, obviously they've looked at the list before. And this may be a little bit about more about availability. She uh -huh. says that Sweet Sister Ella is actually out of print officially and very expensive to purchase. Oh dear. Okay. Um, but and why you know why is it on the short list? So I just did a quick search myself. Um, it is available on Amazon. Um, you can get either anywhere from like seven to twenty dollars. But what I did also, and I, this is what I was going to ask, is as far as availability, are you looking when you were just talking about how available is it? For someone to buy it or someone to borrow it from a well, library. Well, we were looking at libraries specifically. Um, we did WorldCat exactly. search of Nebraska yes. libraries and interlibrary loan. Um, yeah. we, this one is actually in, in WorldCat. There's 120 libraries that have this particular right. title. So, so we're hoping people could get it from interlibrary loan, which should be And the be whole an first page option. of it is all Nebraska libraries. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you can get it from anywhere in the country too. So a little bit of. Um, Leeway and availability, I guess. It's not just go out and buy your own copy, but just get it right, from anywhere. Yes. Borrowing it from another library 
is is a way to get a hold of them. And 120 libraries out there having a children's book like that is pretty good across the whole country. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, indeed. So yeah, yeah I'm sorry. So. I'm, yeah, I wish it was uh, more affordable. I didn't. Um, it was hard actually to. Mm -hmm look at all the ways that it was available for mm -hmm. each book b before we made the decision. Um, and this thing, so. too, she's saying it's out of print, and I'm not sure about that. I haven't gone that far. Uh -huh. um, and you said you try to think that it would be available. Could, I mean, when you were doing this, would they, maybe they, at the time you are making up this list, maybe things, the situation was different. They were, there was well, places to get it? Well, there or, were, um, we, we checked the, you know, WorldCat was a consideration, and then we checked um, just Amazon as a general, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just our one stop um, mm -hmm. to see yeah. if it was available. So I guess, yeah, because perhaps they, yeah. we didn't check to see if it was in print, but rather to mm -hmm. see if it was available. And yeah, at that point it was. I've got available. an Amazon one here for twenty eight. I don't know what's considered expensive in the library, well, but for twenty eight dollars. Yeah, twenty eight is cover. pretty, yeah, pretty standard actually um, for for a new book, um, mm -hmm. but that's. For something that's out of print and is harder to get right, hold of, right. yeah, I would say that's yeah. a, an affordable price for um, yeah, for twenty eight sixty five. That's the right one, yeah. Yep, <laughs> yep, that's it. And she has a very distinctive. Um, if you look for anything by Rose Cranz, yeah, you mm -hmm. can tell that it's a Rose yeah. Cranz Hoffman book. She has a distinctive flair uh, for art. Um, and so, uh, so moving on, this uh, Billy and Blaze um, also was out of print for a while. It's back in print. This is one of the hundred best. Um, illustrated books for children, and um, this is the first in a series of Billy and Blaze books, and this one is about uh, little boy Billy, who's been given a horse uh, by his parents, and then when he's jumping his horse, you know, he's out <laughs> in the field with his horse and finds a dog, and it's the story of the boy and the horse and the dog, and this has been, this is back in print in soft cover, so uh, a really pencil sketched, um, just a really sweet um, book with great illustrations. The Perfect, a Perfect Snowman by Preston McDaniels is uh, an older book, um, also illustrated children's book, and um, won a number of awards in its time. And this one, I hope is, I know this is available in libraries, and um, hopefully it's available to purchase too. It's still, uh, still enjoying uh, success mm -hmm. <laughs> as a, um, a, a good book from Nebraska. Going North is a book by Janice Harrington, and this is a story of a family moving from the South to the North, a black family coming uh, to live in Nebraska. And Janice Harrington is still writing books. She has a new book coming out this fall, so she's somebody to look out for. Eleanor and Park. If you haven't of heard of Eleanor and Park, this is a this is a wonderful book. It's been on every reading list for teenagers um, in the last couple years. Another one of the no-brainers, I think. Uh, indeed, <laughs> yes. Um, and excellent. I I love this book. I think everyone is touched in some way by Eleanor and Park. So that's a teenage book or um, a you know high school reading book. The Simpson Sheep Won't Go to Sleep by Bruce Arendt. Uh, this was a Golden Sower winner last year and really uh, also a beautiful illustrated book of, um, well, it's not, it's about sheep, <laughs> but, um, but uh, has that rural, rural flair to it as well. And he's an excellent illustrator, so that's one to look for. The Rhythmatist by Brandon Sanderson. He is uh, he is one of our Brandon. more famous mm -hmm. Nebraska authors. He is a famous uh, fam fantasy writer. The Rhythmatist was I read also, a lot of his stuff. Like yeah, <laughs> yes, he is, uh, he's excellent. Um, and The Rhythmatist was a book that... Um, that was also on all the teenage reading lists in the last um, in the last couple of years. So um, that's one that sh should be easy to find and is excellent. And The House Without a Christmas Tree by Gail Rock, uh, illustrated children's book as well. And then Prairie, or Pioneer Girl, A True Story of a Girl Growing Up on the Prairie is uh, by Andrea Warren. And this has is a true story and it, it has um, actual photographs uh, so you can kind of see what the pioneer life was like. So those are the young adult and picture books. And then poetry is, um, you'll see there are less there are less books here. There are a lot of Nebraska poets um, and we had a hard time choosing. So we decided to uh, limit it to the state poets and the poet laureate. And then we did uh, two different anthologies, one of modern and one of older um, Nebraska poets to try and get a good scope for Nebraska poetry. So John Nyhart was our first uh, Nebraska state poet, and he was made poet laureate. Um, there will never be another poet laureate from Nebraska. It will all, always only be John G. Nyhart in perpetuity. So his famous book, A Cycle of the West, uh, many people um, may recognize the, story, or the song of Hugh Glass from the movie, The Revenant, uh, which right. just came out this mm -hmm. year. And 
Um, and so if you've seen the movie and you were moved by the movie, you will definitely want to read uh, one of the first that it's broken into songs. So you'll want to read the song of Hugh Glass and you'll really um, recognize some of those themes. The Lights and Shadows uh, was a, a Pulitzer Prize winning poetry book by Ted Kuzer, who was our um, state or our national poet laureate. So this is a must read as well. Uh, then Will, William Clefcorn was our state poet after uh, John Neihart and his book, Nebraska, This Place, These People, is uh, thoroughly focused on Nebraska and um, our place and people. Then Twyla Hansen is our current state poet, and her book, Potato Soup, is, um, is, about, um, the, is about the land and environment and, um, and personal experience. So that's another good one. A Nebraska Presence Anthology of Poets, or uh, Anthology of Poetry, just came out a couple years ago, and this is Modern Nebraska Poets. And then 40 Nebraska mm. Poets. This one, I will say, is going to be probably the hardest book to find on the list. It is mm. available in libraries through Interlibrary Loan. Um, this one is hard. Uh, Greg Kuzma is, uh, has written and edited a, a lot of <laughs> Nebraska <laughs> poetry books. So we've, since this one is harder to find, um, there, are, there are a number of collections of Nebraska poetry books edited by uh, Greg Kuzma, who does have a um, we, we chose this one because they're older poets who weren't included in the modern anthologies. And so, mm, so, um, get an idea. so we, we have a better scope. But really, anything edited by Greg Kuzma would, um, is going to be an excellent book or an excellent collection of poetry. Okay, so this is, this is where they're all listed. So if you want to go to the website again, um, mm -hmm. this will be listed on the links um, mm -hmm. that Krista mentioned. But this is the downloadable uh, reading challenge entry form. And so you can see the, uh, the books all sorted into their categories. And um, all you have to do is check off the books you've read, write your name on the bottom, send, the fa send it back to us on the address provided. You can take a picture of it and you know, email it to us, or you can, um, you can scan it, or you can mail it. And then we will have a, drawing, a prize drawing on March 1st. So um, this, this reading challenge started in April. So I, I wish we could have gotten the word out more. <laughs> so you might be playing catch up to read. To yeah, so we're about, we have a little over six months. But you so. could, I, suppose, I mean, as far as reading it, you, you could say, I've read it before. Or you, you could, have to yes, read it if you've like read it this year. You don't yeah. have to read it this year. No, yeah, you, if say, you've read the I book. I already read that one. Yes, yes. If you've already read the book, then it counts. And uh, nobody's checking up on you. I mean, this is that. Uh, <laughs> right. You're not, like, not going to have a test. There's not going to be a quiz <laughs> exactly. about this what is, is a, this book about. <laughs> a good faith reading challenge. And so, um, yeah, we'll just trust that you've read the book. So um, we can, again, send these reading challenge entry forms to your library so you can distribute them to your patrons. Or you can download and print them from our website um, at the, uh, the link provided right there. Just click on Get Involved and go to the Nebraska 150 Reading Challenge. Uh, so the reading cha with any reading challenge or with any, um, <laughs> with any challenge in general, it's all about the prizes. I, I did book it because of the prize because I got a pizza when I was in grade school. And I think, uh, <laughs> I think there's something about even a small incentive mm -hmm. that uh, really ignites a desire to read just to be part partly to be part of something, um, part of a program, but also um, e for the chance of even a small prize is um, often all the motivation people need to, <laughs> to read. And so that's part of the reason why we chose the, or why we decided to have this reading challenge is to kind of get a, get a good buzz going for the books and then to also incentivize reading and um, mm -hmm. to make it a, f a more fun program. Yeah, people like so, the little competition sometimes. Exactly. Like the summer reading program that the kids do is huge. Yes, oh yes. my gosh, I know in Lincoln we had, I think we have something like 15,000 who participated wow. in Lincoln. I mean, just just um, reading in community and being part of something really, uh, being part of something bigger I think is a strong motivation in itself. But um, for the reading programs, um, oftentimes, the, I mean, you know, they might get a small ice cream cone for, you know, I, no, actually we have some good prizes. Yeah. There are ice cream cones, there are train rides, zoo passes, things like that. But yeah. uh, this is this is geared to more towards, a, a, well, adults and children. There are prize packs for all of those categories. Um, the first one, for anyone who's read all 42 books on that short list, uh, is eligible for a prize, a $300 voucher. So I should say these are all drawings. Um, and mm -hmm. so each category has a number of prizes available. So if mm -hmm. you've read all 42 books, you qualify for um, the grand prize drawing, which is a $300 gift voucher to University of Nebraska Press for any of their publications or merchandise. So um, that is the incentive for reading all the books on the list. 
the gold prizes, so anyone who's read 42 books or 12 books or anywhere in between, you know, above 12 books is entered into the gold prize drawing. And those mm -hmm. are being sponsored by bookstores throughout the state. So if you live in Seward and you want, you know, you want a chance to win a gift card to Chapters, for example, you'll, mm -hmm. you know, you can, those, those gift cards will be statewide. Local to where you are. Yes, yeah. exactly. And so, um, so you'll have That's a chance nice. to read or to get gift cards um, in your region. And then um, there are also prize packs being sponsor or being provided by the Nebraska Literary Heritage Association and those are um, we have magnetic poetry and mm -hmm. um, poster book posters and um, and art posters we have and um, notebooks and book bundles and so those will be included with the silver drawing um, gift cards and then um, authors and libraries statewide have been generously donating books uh, for book prizes so if you know an author or if you represent a bookstore or a library and you have new books by Nebraska authors. These are the things that are being included in our book bundle and prize packs. And so we want to give as many of these prizes as we possibly can, um, just so um, all of our, or as many readers as possible can um, can win book bundles. So we're currently, we're, we're, we'll be accepting book bundle, or, you know, book donations of books um, until the, um, until March 1st when we when we have the prize drawing. So those are the things that your patrons can win uh, by participating in the reading challenge. Um, so how do you get the word out about the reading list and how do you get people excited? We have those resources for you. We are, as I mentioned, we're, our program is sponsored by a grant from Humanities Nebraska. Um, they are providing funding to, or they have provided funding to print posters, bookmarks, uh, book lists, reading challenge entry forms, and then book award seals. Uh, the book award seals are, well, I'll show you what they look like. Uh, this is what they look like. That's the poster. Um, and it Ooh, is one a, of those in the windows downstairs. Yeah, it's, like it's, a, <laughs> it's 16 inches long. You know, it's a nice, it's a nice large, size, yeah. not too overwhelming poster um, that you can easily put on a bulletin board. Um, you can use this as a backdrop if you want to create a book display of Nebraska books. Um, this is, we can send you as many posters as you want for that. And then for giveaways, um, we have the bookmarks, the reading challenge entry forms, and the book lists. And um, we can send you, the, that's the back and the front of the bookmark. So on the front of the bookmark, it's the same in, image as the poster. It includes our sponsors there at the bottom. And then a link to our uh, note of our website so people can learn more about Nebraska books. And then just for quick reference, on the back is the short list of um, the book selections. So those are available to you. We will send them to you for free, and you can um, pass those out at your library. And then below, you'll see the Nebraska 150 book seal. And those are those would be like the one book on Nebraska seal or any kind of award seal that you see on a book, um, just to denote that this book was chosen for the Nebraska 150 book list. So if there are books in your library that you want to highlight with the uh, Nebraska 150 books award seal, we will send you the award seal so you can do that. So. Um, there's an entry form, I mean, there's an order form for these things on our website um, that you can, we'll, we'll look at that at the end, but you can order that, any of these that materials. Means that's what this one librarian did say, that she wanted to have all of the books that are on the short list on hand in their library, and this would be a good way to... Yes, exactly, to make the, make the point that this is... And just asking, are, is, and all of these materials are free? For these are all students. all free. Yes, mm -hmm. these are all yep. free, and we'll even mail them for free. So yes, you just no send. cost for the items or the postage or anything. Just um, contact. I so there's yeah. So we can actually. Time. This is my last. Uh, well, I only have two slides left, and then we can go to the um, to the website, and you can see how to order these. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just quickly say that there are uh, book clubs. We encourage book clubs. This is one mm -hmm. of the book clubs that's being done by the Nebraska um, State Historical Society. And um, we encourage everyone to, you know, initiate book clubs at your library or to encourage your patrons to initiate book clubs. And um, I know the Library Commission has book bundles available that they'll send. Mm -hmm. That is going to be a follow-up program, which yes. is right here, yep. September Next 14th. Month. Yeah, we'll be talking more about the Nebraska 150 books. <laughs> so you can um, so you can have some support and some resources in having a book club. But uh, right now, with, I think we just have a couple minutes left. If we can go to the website, I'll sure. you show you. want to click down? I've got the Firefox down oh, right here. Oh, okay. There. Yeah. So oh, and you need the keyboard. There we go. So I'll show you um, some of the places to go on the website so you can order these materials and um, and have them available. 
All right, so this is the website. This, um, any of these spotlights right here will take you right to the page. So if you see the reading challenge, you want to join the challenge, just click on that, and it'll take you right to the, uh, to the reading challenge. Um, and so some of these spotlights are you have the reading challenge, uh, book features by month, and then this is just an explanation of why Nebraska books are significant. But uh, to navigate through the tabs, let's first show you how to order materials. All you have to do is go to the Get Involved tab, Scroll down here to free resources, click on that. This uh, shows you what the resources are. Those are your posters, bookmarks, reading challenge entry forms, book lists, and book seals. Um, this is where you mail the forms, submit requests by phone, mail, fax, or email um, to that address or email address. And then you can either just type it in the body of an email and just tell us where to send it, or you can formally submit uh, this form right here which looks like that. You just write the quantity you want, tell us where to ship it. And um, we do, we package these about every uh, week or 10 days. So it probably takes about two, two weeks at most to get them. Sometimes they go out the next day. Sometimes you wait for two weeks, but um, shouldn't take too long to get them. So you just uh, send us that and we'll get you all of your materials. So I'll close that. And with just a couple minutes left, I'll show you a couple points of interest under Get Involved here. We have the reading challenge. This will um, direct you to all of the, um, tell you about the prizes. Well, uh, here's where you download the reading challenge entry form. Um, if you want to participate in an event or if you want to tell us about an event, we publish all those things right here on the event calendar so you can see what kinds of programs we're doing um, or what programs are going on throughout the state. So, for example, Right on the River is a writing program um, hosted by Karen Shoemaker, who is one of our uh, who is one of the people represented on our list. Um, we're having Lydette Randolph and some of the other uh, authors who contributed to that, um, to that collection of fiction books, or fiction stories, and our Johnny James reading series. Um, so this will just tell you some of the things going on. If you want to know what kind of new, I mean, we keep our news, try to keep our news current. So if there's anything in your newspaper that you'd be willing to share with us, please let us know. We want to publish that and um, let our patrons see what's going on. Uh, now I'm just going to show you one more thing, and then sure. I think we're done. No so this right, uh, this is the sesquicentennial book list. This is where you go to print the uh, the book, the 150 books on this downloadable. Um, printable list right here. And then um, these are the 150 notable Nebraska books. This is a page that's in progress all the time. We're constantly updating books on this page or on this um, this individual books page. But this uh, will allow you to print the short list. And then these are each of the books individually. So you can, if you want to know more about the book, um, learn when it was published, what you know, learn more about the author, you can go to any of these. So um, let's go to, let's just go to the meaning of names since we've been talking about Karen Shoemaker. Mm -hmm. So you can go to the meaning of names. Uh, it was printed by Red Hen Press in Pasadena in 2014. If you want to see Karen's website, you click there. Here's the publisher's website. A little bit about the book. Um, some of the book awards just to give you some context, um, easy context for the books. So that's the website. Are there any questions about anything before we move on? Or before we're um. done, actually, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, actually, um, we do have a few minutes. We always start a little after. Um, if we, we always go as long as is necessary okay. for this. So, um, yeah, if anybody does have any um, questions, comments, thoughts about any of this, um, I'm just looking up something here. Uh, let's see if I can figure out how to do this. Um, type it into the questions section and... Okay. Someone did have a question about our book club kits about this, and as as you, as um as Aaron had mentioned, we are going to have the session yeah on September fourteenth next month. Um, Lisa Kelly will be with Aaron, Aaron will uh -huh. be back with us. Yeah. Um, Lisa is always the one here at the Library Commission who does our sessions about our book club group, group book groups, doing a book group um reading book reading group uh the kits we have are going to be here to talk about that um. And okay, we do have a question. Um, oh, Lisa is actually watching. Hi, Lisa. Um, she's looking forward to our session on the 14th. Yes, I think a lot of people are too. Good. Um, and someone does want to know: um, Are there discussion questions for each title on the short list? 
Oh, I, now, I don't know <laughs> if that's something you do. I know we sometimes do that with our book club kids, but I'm not sure. Ideally, yes. That thing. was the original plan was to have discussion, um, mm -hmm. discussion questions and more resources available. Um, the, the problem is uh, staff time, you know, the ability to actually um, thoughtfully come up with those questions. As with any grant, our grant was partially funded, and so we were given the money for the resources um, and the, you know, we have all the things you need for your book groups, but we weren't um, given any funding for extra staff to do these extra things that we were hoping, um, hoping to do to augment the reading list. And so we haven't had, I mean, with time, hopefully we can, develop some of those individual book pages better and um, they and hopefully come up with some discussion questions um, that would help facilitate a book group but I know with any of the book uh, book club bags or the you know the books that are distributed mm -hmm. by the library commission a lot of those come with questions and so um, that's yeah. something to maybe talk to Lisa about and but I'm through sure. our website right now there's not we do not have the discussion questions so I wish we did yeah and I was just looking at that and that's what I was doing here um, another question was also about the book club kits um, that they know and we've also mentioned that that we do have kits that are for some of these books in here mm -hmm. and they wanted to know if there was um, specifically make a list of the kits that like a special sub list of here's all the ones that are book club kits that are part of Nebraska oh, 50 sure. books but I do see actually and I it, we, we it appears there is a way that we've done that um, let's see here there's a way to search our list for the 150 titles yeah um, and that's what I was trying to do but I do see I have it linked here for the show that's coming up on September 14th, we do have a link right here. Several um, titles from this list are available. And if you do click on that, this is from our um, description of the show for next month. Um, this does bring up all of the books that are, um, mm -hmm. the have book club kits that are part of the 150. And you can see, yes, we do have for the one discussion questions here, uh, generic questions. So if you're looking for ways to use these books, and I don't, I don't want to, you know, give <laughs> oh, yeah, what you guys are going to do for next month. But um, yes, there is, um, a, you can search for the NE 150 books and get all of them there all in one shot. So you have no, you know, as opposed to just, as she was saying, I can look for a specific title if I know, but if mm -hmm. I just want to know what are, you know, let's just do it the other way. What are all the ones that are available? And then I'll decide those are the ones that I want to work on um, in my book club. Yes, you can do that by browsing Nebraska 150 titles. All right. There you go. So, but we'll have more about that next <laughs> month. So I'm not going to, you know, yeah. but, you know, go ahead and explore the list. You're, <laughs> um, you're okay. So Lisa, yeah, I, I was, trying to find this and she says yes there's a way thank you very much yeah <laughs> all right Great. anybody have any other questions about the um, program the 150 books um, any of the titles anyone's well I'm not gonna say oh, I was gonna say anything you think should be on the list it wasn't so go <laughs> oh, there <yeah. laughs> I'm sure that's been a discussion there's a, yep that comes up pretty uh, and you can you're welcome to give voice to that unfortunately yeah. the it's a pretty rigid list at this mm -hmm. point but we yeah. do we still do like to hear about notable Nebraska it's, books that we might I'm, have it's not hard considered getting it down to just 150 it is the whole remarkably history hard. of a state's mm -hmm. writing oh I couldn't even yeah and Nebraska has a, a particularly rich history of, yeah. um, of writers, and I, I really do believe, I mean, uniquely, <laughs> um, a, mm -hmm. a lot of exceptional writing has come from Nebraska. So and it's I'm hoping that this will also just get people, even if we didn't include your favorite title or something, <laughs> it at least will get people, it's a start. I mean, this is right. just the 150. This is, you know, start with some of these authors. And if you find an author on here, um, some of their books are on the list, but other ones you'll hopefully expand and find, if you mm -hmm. like that particular person, find other things that just didn't get selected for the list. You know, keep going. Don't exactly. just limit yourself and to this. I yeah. think that's the, that's the whole point of this is just to call, um, call attention to the Nebraska literary tradition and to um, just bring attention to Nebraska writers. Um, mm -hmm. The mission of the Heritage Room is to celebrate, to preserve, and to, to promote uh, books by Nebraska authors. And so this is just one uh, one of our programs that helps to do that. And so mm -hmm. this is just this is just the starting point. So yeah. I hope this will um, begin uh, a journey for you into Nebraska authors and what we have contributed to uh, our state and the national, I mean, the, the literary consciousness um, 
Mm. All over. Well, I've already seen some that I'm going to want to now grab myself. <laughs> so, uh, which is good or bad, you know. I have stacks of books that I'm still to read, you know, that oh. I've bought over the over years, of course. I think we all do. Yes. <laughs> um, but there's going to be some other ones added to that pile, unfortunately. So. <laughs> um, but it doesn't look like any other urgent questions have come in while we've been okay. chatting. So I think since we are a little after 11 o'clock, we will wrap it up. All right. Thank you all for tuning morning. in. Yeah. I'm glad to. Have Glad to be a part of this. Thanks so much, Erin. This is great. Um, I'm glad to see all these titles. And like I said, I want to get into some of these as well. And um, as we said, next month, Erin will be back. We'll be talking specifically about using these titles in your book groups. Yes, right. So um, mm -hmm. sign up for that one if you want to delve more into that and actual more things you can do um, at your library. And we will expand on you know specific things. Um, and if you're doing something at your library you already have planned, I'll throw that out right now. Um, I'm doing this off the cuff. I haven't told Lisa or Aaron. But um, contact us or contact Lisa maybe, and we can get you come on and talk about what you're doing at your library. If you have something planned or organized or something, we'd be glad to share it so that other libraries can get an idea of what all, what is already going on out there, what's already been planned. Absolutely. Um, so definitely let us know, and we can um, have you chat about that um, as well. Uh, so that will wrap it up for the today's show. Um, it has been, is being recorded as we speak, um, and it will be available on our Encompass Live website. As you saw earlier when I first got to here, you can just go and Google Encompass Live, and it comes up. Luckily, so far, we're the only thing called that <laughs> on the Internet, <laughs> so it's pretty easy to find our website. Um, uh, these are our upcoming shows, but right beneath that is where we have our archive sessions. If you click on there, you will get all of our archives of all of our previous shows. This goes back to the very beginning, which was in 2009. Um, so if you want to, you can go back and watch all of our old things when we were a very you know, young show and just getting started. Um, so some of the things on here may be um, out of date, but they're for historical purposes. Our, we're, our you know, librarians are into archiving things, so they're all there. But feel free to watch anything. Um, this session we posted up here, and I think last week's, yeah, we'll have the recording. We'll have the PowerPoint presentation that we've been using and the links to all the different things. We'll be able, just like this is the one from this one from last week's. So you'll be able to watch that. Um, ideally, it should be up and ready sometime this afternoon. I'll let you all know with an email when it's available for you if you want to rewatch something or share this with anyone um, that you think might be interested in it. It'll be posted there. Um, so I hope you'll join us next time we have Aaron back, which is next month. And next week we have a making the most of Maker Camp at your library. That's our next topic. Uh, Maker Camp is like you know these maker rooms or um, exploring rooms and things that have technology and things that people can use to just create. Um, there is a Maker Camp project, which is kind of like summer camp for making. So rather than saying we have this whole maker thing, we have to constantly be going doing this is more of a you know um, short-term type thing. And there's a couple of libraries here in Nebraska, Seward and Geneva, who have done um, uh, set, uh, maker camps. And they're both going to, librarians from their um, libraries are going to come on and tell us about that. Hi. You still recording? Yeah. It's OK. Oh. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, Lisa, who we were just talking about, just walked in. Say hi, Lisa. You're here, and I told them. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> we were just talking about uh, next week's shows. Um, so I hope you'll join us for that. Also, Encompass Live is on Facebook. You can click from here and in many other places on our site. Um, if you are a big Facebook user, go over there and give us a like. There we go. And this annoying thing will pop up because I'm not logged in. Um, I post reminders of when the new show is, when a show is starting, when our recordings are available, um, reminders of the upcoming shows. So if you are big on Facebook, do pop over there and give us um, a like. Other than that, that will wrap it up for this morning. Thank you very much, and hope you'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Say bye, Lisa. Bye. <laughs>